So here are my top 10 inexpensive tools that I use all the time and I would highly recommend that a person gets. Uh, first of all, I have a nice DeVault drill and I have a nice real steel Phillips bit on it. I have tons of bits. This one's my favorite. It's, uh, it's good, it doesn't, a lot of times if you go to the store like Menards or Home Depot, you can buy a 10 pack of bits but they won't last because they're not meant to. This one is ancient <laughs> and it still works, so yeah. If anyone like moves this bit on me, I, I don't go into a rage, but I definitely start to get worried. Felix over there is laughing. <laughs> uh, on that same token, um, some nice Hoyt uh, drill bits too. Uh, made in USA. And the thing is, you know, you know, drill bits are important because there's a lot of times you can, you'll have a drill bit and you know, it, it'll be crooked, it'll be a piece of junk. But these are nice and straight, see? Don't worry, I won't drill into my hand. So I would say that, you know, the, the best drill set you can afford. Uh, it's better to spend money on something high quality than spend money on something cheap that breaks because once you replace it, you know, there goes twice the money. Um, another tool that's very handy is a Dremel. It's around $75. This is a 10 speed, although I usually only go about halfway up. Because at full speed, this thing's pretty scary. It's like vzzz. And my favorite tool is the cutoff wheel. See that? The reinforced cutoff wheel. They're really good ones. You can buy those in packs of five. Uh, what I'd recommend with these is uh, don't buy them at the hardware store. You know, like, you know, Ace or True Value. That's going to be really expensive. Uh, I would buy these online, Amazon, or also Walmart. Actually sells them pretty good price. I mean, it's a big difference. So you, you're talking about $10 a pack at the hardware store versus $5 at Menards or Home Depot. So, you know, hardware stores are useful, but sometimes they overcharge for a lot of things. Hot glue gun. I really, really like hot glue guns. Uh, you know, these are like five bucks. <laughs> and uh, I actually bought this one from McMaster Car but it's probably not too much different than what you get at the craft store. The thing that's great about hot glue is, you know, you can use it to just put a little bit down to help wrangle your wires, use it to seal wires, use it to connect things together, use it to quickly connect things together, use it to seal things, all sorts of stuff you can do with hot glue and hot glue sticks are pretty cheap. And yeah, I don't know. Sometimes people make fun of me for how much I like hot glue, but I don't care. I like it so much I even made the automatic hot glue gun that we did earlier in the season. We gave it away as a, uh, as a prize. Uh, you know, if you watch the show and you read in the community, um, if you like a build and you're like, hey, this is what I would do with the build, you actually can get an opportunity to win the build. So I would say about 50% 50 of the stuff we build, we actually uh, ship away to lucky viewers, basically for having the best submission or joining the contest. After we built it and before we gave it away, we actually used it several times because it really did work quite well. Um, it, you know, you could like write your name and hot glue. And the thing that was different between it and a, you know, Google it like this is like, you pull the trigger and you push, push, push. So, you know, you kind of have to keep pumping it out, but with the automatic glue gun, you just held it and then it gave you a constant stream continuously until the stick ran out. So it really did work quite well. I mean, I still think it'd be a cool product. It'd probably be too expensive, but I would buy one if they had an automatic glue gun. Like if they had like what we built, but all svelte and, you know, sexy, you know, like a, like the thing a doodle or you no, know, the three doodler they had on Kickstarter, you know. Yeah, I would buy one definitely. I only have a couple hand tools here because I, I'm showing you the absolute most useful ones. Needle nose pliers, very useful. Um, you use them to hold bolts, you know, twist things, bend rods. Uh, you know, and this is like, you know, pretty medium sized normal pair. This is, you know, you can do fine work with it, but you can also do tougher stuff. These I use all the time, red angle cutters. Uh, <laughs> even though I have those nice fancy automatic wire strippers, I usually just strip wires with these. See, it's super fast. Also, you can cut wires with them. You can cut material. You can do all sorts of stuff. So I would say as far as like hand tools, wrenches, these are the two you want. You need those pliers, angle cutters, side angle cutters. <laughs> and then people over 50 have an inappropriate name for them. 
Okay, so this is probably the number one tool I always recommend. Granted, besides like, you know, soldering irons and whatnot, a nice pair of tweezers. Here's the human hand. Finger is approximately 0.5 inches thick. And my fingers are kind of skinny. This is much better than your hands, you know. If you're picking up small surface mount components, or even just wrangling wires in position. You know, you can get so much control out of a nice pair of tweezers. Uh, yeah, so, you know, this is a few dollars at the drugstore. Uh, you know, you can buy fancy tweezers meant for electronics, but, you know, these are like lacrosse brands <laughs> meant for plucking your, you know, eyebrow hairs or whatever it is. Highly, highly recommended. You know, if you're doing fine circuit work, this should be the first thing you get after an iron. Exacto knife. Uh, yeah, we use these a lot too. I mean, the nice thing about exacto knives is you can cut small traces, you can scrape surface, I'm sorry, you can cut small traces, you can scrape away solder mask, you can obviously cut things, you can carve things. Always be safe, always carve away from you. But yeah, uh, I have several exacto knives around the shop because they're quite useful. Here's something that might not be completely obvious, a silver felt tip marker. And these are useful because you can mark polarity and position and whatnot on components. And components are usually, you know, black. So, go boop, boop. Now if I remove it, I know what its polarity was or where it belongs. Also, uh, sh uh, heat shrink tubing, cable bundles. Uh, yeah, I definitely use these silver markers more than, you know, like a, you know, any other color marker that I have. Just because typically, yeah, it just, gives a better mark and you can see it on a variety of surfaces. So yeah, I would say get a nice silver marker, uh, very handy. You'll be like, the best tools, <laughs> the best tools are the ones when you get them, you're like, how did I live without that? That's when you know you've bought a good tool. I got this kit actually from uh, Maker Fair. This is the iFixit kit. It's a bunch of different security bits, uh, Allen bit, torque, star head. These are very common. I use this to take apart like Xbox controllers when I'm modding them. And there's even a, a, a coupling shaft. So I haven't used this yet, but I could. So if you wanted to go around a corner or something, see, <laughs> see that? Um, I just, you know, brought this out as an example of, you know, basically have a good assortment of uh, screwdrivers, either something like this or, you know, like just a, Ratcheting screwdriver like this is also useful. You know, where it goes ratchets, and then you have the direction. And uh, yeah, I would recommend that highly. And the last thing I have here on my table are the helping hands. I would remove the magnifying glass because it got in the way more than it was useful. Now these guys are really good because um, you can hold a circuit board and solder it. You can hold a wire and solder things to it. You can basically just use them for anything. And I've had these for quite a long time and they still work even though they're a bit beat up. So yeah, I would say these are my overall inexpensive tools that you will find really useful when modding and building circuitry and projects. That's all the tools we have to show you for right now, but stay tuned for future top 10 lists. Please let us know if you want to continue to see bonus content by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe.